Hey, what's going on YouTube? So I'm pulling up to pick up a bill changer that I had rebuilt from the old car wash. Um, the one I'm currently using, uh, I was able to buy off uh, the equipment package that I bought with everybody else, but I decided to get this one rebuilt. So let's go in and check it out, see how it looks. Pretty cool, these guys will fix up old equipment and basically make it brand new. They got, they do bill changers, vending machines, basically any type of credit card acceptance. So this is similar to like what I just had done, but cool little shop these guys got here. They work on all sorts of projects. So here's what we got set up. They changed out the decal, put a little plastic cover on this. I wish, I think I have some pictures. If you go back to my first videos, you'll see this thing still installed at the old site and all, all set up. But the guts are on there, except for the hopper. That's still original, but they put an MEI validator on here with uh, this circuit board that's back there. This slides out somehow, but I gotta figure out how that works. So. I don't know if I'm gonna hang on to this until maybe I find another car wash or if I'm gonna resell it, but I figured it was worth rebuilding. So it looks pretty cool. Now this is my site that I've had open for a couple months now. And the build changer that I was talking about earlier that I have here is this guy right here. I obviously went with this guy because first of all, it's newer. Uh, I can actually get parts for it and everything, but it's also because it's I got two hoppers right here and two validators. So if some type of error goes wrong, one, this out of service light up here up top will turn on and it'll tell the people that it's out of service. It also won't take any, any of their money and they can always just go over to the next one over. And so I always have a backup because the problem is if this entire machine goes down or if I just have a single hopper machine and that goes down, then I can no longer accept cash and cash is a big part of my business out here, it, just the area that I'm in uh, is lower income and a lot of people don't have credit cards or whatever it is, whatever the reason, they just prefer to use the cash. But what's cool on these machines is I'll come in here and solid red lights mean I'm good, but then these lights may ha be flashing or the out of service lights on and I just go over here and see how many times it's flashing. So if it flashes six times in a row, stringing detected i'm i've never had that i don't really know what that means i have had seven flashes in a row coin acceptor error and then what i do is i come down here and um i'll usually just dump out the coins into a bucket clean it out put a fresh bill in let it run and it'll usually clear the air after that but i'm looking forward to uh, test this guy out so let's get it unloaded What's really crazy about this old machine is I actually still have two keys to it. I found them in the, uh, just going through everything in here when it was abandoned and I uh, saved all the keys and I actually found two that matched this lock. So inside here, now this is what's called a Rode DC200. I'm told that the company is not even in business anymore, but that's okay because everything's now converted over. Uh, I actually realized that I now have the same validator here as I do on my other change machine over there. And so that error code that's passed it on the door is probably the same error codes that I'll get on this one. And then over here, I just have to release this so we can pull it out. And I have a, a similar setup there where I, I've got a blinking red light and a reset button it looks like uh so i can clear the codes but it, it's pretty simple now i do need to go get some quarters put in our hopper right here so we can go test it out so let's go grab a few quarters okay get my bucket make sure it's all cleaned out and i cleaned out the quarters actually this morning already forgetting that i was gonna do this video and everything so I've already done the collection of quarters, but I think there's gonna be a few in here that we can use to test at our machine. It is Sunday, so it's been a busy, it's been a busy afternoon. 
and it's like, I think three or four o'clock now. So, put that back on, lock that up. I might need to get, because I know that even if I have that many quarters in the bottom of my current change machine, it'll error out and say out of service. So I'm pretty sure I need to get at least three or four inches worth of quarters to fill that the bottom of that hopper up. I like my uh, Betty Crocker Tupperware catchers. I actually just use a paint tray in one of my bays to catch quarters. So that's two bays for the quarters. I think that's gonna be enough, but I'll show you guys what I found uh, this morning going through, I, I got my first tokens come into uh, the car wash today. And it says Kurtz car wash on this other side. Now it's fine, but what I found out, cause I took the quarter and I put it back through the machine is my coin mechanisms actually registered this as $1, not even a quarter. What's crazy is because Every once in a while, I will get dollar coins come into my machine, these guys, like that. And my coin mechanisms only recognize these as a quarter. So, heck, I, I lost, what, basically three bucks right here. Uh, but if I continue to see tokens come through, I'll try to uh, mess with my Slugbuster 2s that I have and see if I can reprogram them to reject these uh, tokens and also to register these as $1. Just a project I need to get around to. Well, let's get this bucket of quarters and drop it in the hopper. Now, check it out. We got our quarters down in there and I'm gonna come around to the front and this plastic thing kind of gets in the way, but I'm gonna put this in actually, technically this would be upside down in most machines, but I don't think that's gonna matter with this one. Uh-oh. It dropped one quarter down here, and I can hear it's just running, and it's just dropping quarters. It dropped way more than a dollar worth of quarters, but it dropped it into the bottom of the machine, so it's just something I'm gonna have to figure out, I guess. And then lastly, the out of order light went on, which is good. At least I know that works, uh, but I gotta figure out why it just dropped like, I don't know, three bucks worth of quarters and it didn't hit them, it didn't hit the hopper. I have identified the issue and I'll show you what it was. So the hopper will rest back in here where it's got a drive that turns this chain on the back of the hopper. Now peek down in here and let it focus. And I'm gonna reach back in here and turn that drive and watch as this chain turns. It pulls these quarters up this little snake. Now see how that quarter snuck by? But most of these quarters are falling off before it can get to the top of the snake. See that? And there's even, the quarters aren't tilted back against that chain enough to get caught right now. So just a few are getting by like that. Now, What's the, what the problem is, is I have that flat on a flat surface, whereas it's supposed to be tilted, resting back more like, like this. So let's put my shim behind here and I'll show you how it works with the shim back there. Okay, I got it all shimmed up. And the reason this wasn't sitting all the way back like it was, and it wasn't getting all the quarters to the top, is because these wires right here were forward like this, stuck to the sidewall and they were keeping it from sitting all the way back. And then when the quarters were dropping at the top right there, they were running down here into the base. So that's all it was, it, was, it just wasn't sitting flush against that. But now let me show you inside the hopper once it's, once it's tilted back. Okay, so now when I run it, the quarters actually stay inside that groove and make it to the top and drop. So, pretty simple system, but cool how it works as well. Another cool thing that I like about this update kit is instead of having to use a dollar or, or money to test it out, I can come over here to where it says input 
and I push the little button that's in there and it imitates a dollar going through the system. And so I activated it, just gave it a test shot and I've got a dollar worth of quarters there. Now the real test is gonna be to put a $5 bill in here and make sure that it counts $5 accurately. So that's the last thing I'm gonna do. Stick this guy in here. So imagine if someone stuck a $20 bill in there, a fold that would make that cup. I've actually had people do it over here on this machine and you have to pull the quarters out halfway through to make sure that um, it doesn't overfill the cup or whatever. So let me count these real quick. Okay, as expected, we got one, two, three, four, five dollars worth of quarters. So the machine works, we got it all tested out. I kind of like it, I like that input feature on here. But if any of you car wash guys that are watching wanna buy a change machine off me, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing for now, just uh, gonna hold on to it, obviously. But hit me up if you got any ideas for it. And by the way, guys, uh, anybody that has messed with these before in the past and knows any good maintenance items to be checking on, I just, you know, fix it as I go. I'm still new to the game and everything. Uh, if you know anything about either one of these uh, rows that are converted over, or this guy, the uh, standard change maker, let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. I'm gonna drop a dollar twenty-five into this machine. I like to. When I leave my site every time, go ahead and vend an item out of each one of these vendors, make sure there's no coins jammed, and then just leave the item behind for the next customer. I feel like they got lucky a little bit and keep coming back. So until then guys, uh, stay tuned for some more videos.